guys, BSG Trek Fan 88 here for um, a review. Um, this is the Bic America F12 475 watt powered subwoofer. It's normally about 150 watts continuous, but it has a maximum output of 475. Uh, most of you saw my unboxing of this sub where I was um, initially impressed by its overall design, and I still am. After about a week of use, I would say that it's about 50% broken in, but I know a lot of you want this review done early, so um, here it is. I'm sorry about the way this is framed. The way my entertainment center is set up, I can't put the camera back any further without showing you everything but me and the sub. So just deal with it for now. Don't worry, I'm going to show you more in widescreen format. Um, this is an excellent sub for the value or for what you pay for. But before that, let me get into my knowledge here. I'm not going to say that I'm an expert. Um, I've worked in retail for a very long time, but this is also a passion of mine and a hobby, not just a former job of mine. I know a lot about home theater equipment, specifications, um, brand names, but what I like to personalize, or specialize I should say instead, um, in are settings. You know, I can't stand people that buy speakers and take them home and hook them up and that's it, they don't tune anything. So before I even talk about this guy, um, know this. One, you must, for the love of God, have your home theater receiver tuned properly, okay? Don't just hook this bad boy up and use the control knob on the back volume and go, oh, it's loud, it's low, it's, it's soft, it's, it's loud. Play with settings, know what you're doing. And if you don't, most receivers these days, if you spend an okay amount of money on them, have a setting where it'll, you know, use a microphone and figure out what's going on. Um, the best thing I can do to tell you um, is crossover controls or frequency controls. The lower the number, the more oomph, the more that low bass, that stuff that's barely audible, but it, you know it's there. The higher the number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and above, Behind me are Klipsch F3 tower speakers. They're badass, but they can only handle about 50 or 40. Um, anything below that you need and want a subwoofer anyway. And these are high quality tower speakers. They are about 500 bucks a piece a couple years ago. So, um, it's all about setting, okay? That being said, um, like I was saying, this is a great sub for its value. Um, once it's broken in and once it's tuned properly, you're going to get a very good response out of it. It has the lowest frequency of about 20 hertz, which is anything lower than that you pretty much can't even hear. I mean, if I was to do a test tone right now at uh, 10 hertz, you'd see the sub going like this. Okay, I mean, in and out. I'm not talking about rapid fire. I'm talking about the sub itself going in and out. The shit that you see happen to speakers when you play stuff loudly, only it would be like nothing you can even hear. Uh, so it starts at 20. Um, I would recommend this sub for anybody who wants to add a lot of oomph to their home theater system while on a budget. I'm not going to lie, there are better subwoofers out there, but they cost four, five, six hundred dollars. I used to have a sub that was six hundred bucks, a Klipsch F, or RW, uh, reference subwoofer, which you'll see in the pictures after this in my home theater system. I don't have that anymore. It, uh, the amp blue and there's a long story. So anyway, for a budget, it's a great sub. Um, it works best for movies. I found that you can get, again, when properly tuned, that very low War of the Worlds tripod, not the horn, which is scary as fuck, but when the tripods are marching, if you have that movie, put it on right now. When those tripods march, I remember clear as a day in the movie theater, the fucking theater shook when they marched, and this will make that happen. Um, when it comes to music, if your receiver has a music setting, you might have to tune that setting a little differently if you can. Um, this will hit the low notes, but um, like in some of the reviews, they kind of unfairly put it as sounding horrible for music. It works for music, it, it just doesn't have the same punch effect unless you turn it up just a little bit for music. It's really designed for that .1 LFE track. Um, jump cut. Um, I had to check my timing. The overall quality of this, after having it for a while and looking at it, um, I wouldn't put anything on top of this being a subwoofer anyway, but some subs you can tell that the box, the cabinetry that it's in is high quality. This is okay. I don't see it lasting you 
a hell of a long time, 10 years or so. But I mean, these things never really have problems. The problem that I have is that on the outer edge here, I don't know if it's painted or if it's infused, but I can tell right now with the way that I like to test things and take the panel on and off and when I'm tuning the subwoofer and uh, just messing around with it like I was doing tonight before the review, I tend to put my hands here and I can tell right now, it's a little bit of the glare, but like right here in the edge here, the paint's already gone. Not gone, it's kind of rubbed away, so keep that in mind. Um, the quality of the sub itself, I mean, this is a very firm rubber. I forget the actual material it's made out of. Um, it needs to break in. I've had this for about a week now, um, and I've <laughs> I've pissed off the neighbors a few times. Nothing loud, but a lot of low-end stuff, uh, like Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, War of the Worlds, um, 2012, some Jurassic Park in there. Um, quality of the sub itself is pretty cool you can always replace it if anything goes wrong um, unfortunately with this review it's kind of another overview because the microphone on my camera or any microphone for that matter you can't pick up 20 Hertz you know over a camera microphone so the only thing I can say is take my word for it um, I've been doing this a very long time 10 years um, I know what I'm talking about when I like when I talk about quality again it's really you can take over there I have an 8 inch 150 maximum watt Sony powered subwoofer that came with a home theater in a box like seven years ago. That thing kicks ass because I have it tuned properly. This blows it out of the water. It's like comparing a, a Corolla to a Corvette, but still, you know what, if you know how to drive a Corolla, you can do some pretty cool things. Bad analogy, good analogy, whatever, who cares. Um, you're going to notice when you buy this, especially before it's broken in, but even afterwards I'm going to guess. Being a 12 inch sub, it's not going to move that much. People all the time, when they go test out subs in the store or in their car, they think that if they see it move, it's good. Okay? That's not good. A sub shouldn't move that much to give you that punch. Yes, this will move, and I'll show you it moving in the video in a minute, but it doesn't have to. I've watched Lord of the Rings, The Return of King, the end final battle sequence with the fucking giant elephants walking around and my fucking house is shaking. This is when my parents aren't home. And that thing is moving, but it's not moving that much. My speakers are gonna die. <laughs> I mean, I have these set so they, they cut off at 40 hertz and the sub takes over after that. And they need, these things were going back and forth. But of course they're handling, and the center channel too, they're handling the sound effects and everything else. This is just handling the bass. Um, so when you get this, I mean, it's, it's fun, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that it has a removable grill, but, you know, it's not going to move unless you're playing it pretty friggin' loud. Um, that being said, it sounds pretty good as long as it's tuned properly. So if you can find one of these for about a hundred bucks, a uh, hundred bucks, yeah, right, a uh, hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks, I wouldn't pay any more than two fifty for this, again though, Looking around, I mean, I research shit to death before I buy it. After looking around for about a week, going into stores, looking at prices, Amazon, Newegg, eBay, this is pretty much, with the exception of the model above this on Bic.com, for I think a couple hundred bucks more, this is your best value. I really do think that the Bic America 12 inch, uh, F12, I think it's called, the, the it's worth it. Um, again, break in period of about three weeks of heavy use. Not heavy, heavy use, but, you know, watch something at a decent volume at night, you know, for about a couple hours. Put on a movie every other night, you know. Uh, what I did was I have it tuned a little bit, uh, turned up a little bit more than it should to help break it in, but after the breaking period, really sit down and watch a movie that you know by heart from the theater, or if you're a techie, you know how to tune your receiver properly. Um, another thing to keep in mind, a lot of sound effects come out of the center channel, that, that one that sits on top or below your TV. If you're smart enough, and no offense, but if you know what you're doing, I have a very good center channel from Klipsch. Again, it's a reference, it's the gold speakers on it, and they're not real gold, it's the color. Um, it can handle bass, but I, even though it's, and you'll see in the pictures again, even though it can handle bass, I still have my receiver set to send that bass about at 100 hertz, mind you, not 40 or 30 or 50, but 100 and below, it gets sent to this because this can handle it. 
Um, the center channel is the most important speaker for your home theater system. And then it's the subwoofer, because think about it. When you're listening to a 5.1 track, sound effects, music, dialogue, and your sub. About 70% of the sound effects come out of the center channel, because in a movie theater, you know, it's the same setup, only there's more speakers. You get the center, left, and right. The dialogue, you know, when I watch a movie at home, I like it to sound like the theater, because when you watch a movie in a theater, the one thing that home theater systems can't really do, unless you tune it right, is when people talk, there's a lot of, not deep bass, but you can tell that, it, you know, if you watch The Sopranos, Tony Soprano, uh, The Terminator, Arnold, his voice is very, bleh, monotone, depth to it. You know, so keep that in mind as well. But overall, F12, um, I would give it, for its price point, I would give it a 4. Uh, I would recommend it. Um, good controls in the back. Decent but not perfect quality container or a box. You'll notice when you do this on your own, if you buy it, tap it right here, you can tell. Obviously, it's hollow. Um, oh, real quick. Um, I'm actually going to check the time on my camera real quick. Hold on. Um, ah, see, this is a horrible review on my part. The, the port, the hole that's in the subwoofer where the air flows from the movement of the sub that produces the sound, um, on really shitty subwoofers and on expensive ones, when you got some good bass going, that son of a bitch you're going to hear. You're going to hear the air. You're going to hear the sub moving. The way that this was designed, I guess, it cuts back on it, and it really does. Um... With normal subs, if I was to flip this over and go back to the other video and look at the pictures, but if you were to put, um, here we go, if you were to put the owner's manual in front of the port, the hole, while it was doing something pretty badass, punchy and whatnot, you would see this thing, you know, go like this, right? Maybe I'll do a video of it, I don't know yet. Um, with this, it doesn't do it as much. I'm guessing that's because of how the port was designed. So if you're a fan like I am of that test, it doesn't give the same results as a sub that doesn't have a specialized port. Um, but anyway, excellent sub for its value. I'm not going to say it's the best because it's not, but if you want to add some really good low-end bass at high volumes, you know, something capable of handling some noise, pick this sucker up. I think on Amazon it's still $180, bucks, 200 bucks. Totally worth it. Just be careful of the paint on this. If you're like me, you like to lean on it when tuning it and listening to it. Um, again, tune your system, break in period, tune your system, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep saying that because even if you have a home theater in a box where it has little satellite speakers and one sub, tune your system, okay? You can buy the $1,000 Martin Logan sub, which I love Martin Logan, and it'll sound like shit if you don't have your system tuned. I, I knew a person that had a home theater in a box, right, the kind where it looks like it's a, it's a decent receiver. It basically is a receiver that comes with cheap satellite speakers and a power sub, similar to my Sony over there. But it's set, so it, the receiver knows that it has small little satellite speakers. So it sends all of the bass and the mid-range to the sub. Well, the guy got rid of the speakers and bought a couple thousand dollars worth of new speakers like mine and hooked it up and was like, what the fuck, I'm not getting any sound. Tune your system, for the love of God. Uh, my recommendations for speakers, Klipsch, um, I do not like Poke Audio, I think they're shit, other people love them, their old stuff was great, their new stuff is shit, unless you buy the really expensive. For the money, Klipsch speakers. Do not buy Bose, except the Wave Radio, if you take off the speaker grill of a Bose speaker, it's paper and blue, I can't fucking stand that. Uh, audio receivers, if you have the money, buy a high-end Pioneer, if you're like me where you're on a so-so budget. Denon. Not the low end, but the, the low mid-range Denon receivers. Um, yeah. Um, go into your receiver's menu. Go in the manual. Look at the settings. See what you have. You know, you can have the receiver set so only the point one track comes out of this. All right. I have it set so the point one track and where it crosses over for sound to come out of the sub. So again, you have the, the frequency range. Just Google it if you want. I point to my computer because it's over there. This will handle 20 and above. I have it cut off at uh, 120, and it will handle everything else below that for my center channel and for my rear speakers because my rear speakers are smaller. These bad boys I have set 
for 40 hertz. People think that because it's a higher number, that's the lower, lower, that's the base. It works the opposite way. And believe me, it, it tricked me up for the longest time too. Okay, so the best way is also trial and error. Loop a part of a movie, or not a song, a movie, because it has, you know, that 5.1 dedicated audio track for the sub. Play a movie, loop it over and over again and tune it. Mess with your settings, don't be afraid. You can always hit the magic reset button and, you know, start from scratch. So this is BSG Trek Fan signing off. Um, again, four out of five. I would give it a thumbs up. Um, I would recommend it. Um, 70% uh, movies and then 30% music um, if you're really picky. But in general, if you simply mess with the settings a little bit for when you listen to music, like if you have an automatic mode for music on your receiver, um, it, you can get some good song, good, good, good sound quality for music as well. But I've noticed that it works better for movies than music. My fucking back. Um, I'm going to put a video on of different stuff playing. It's probably going to get flagged by YouTube, but you're going to watch this sub in action. Um, again, you're not going to be able to hear it, but, you know, it is what it is. And for the love of God, when you YouTube this sub, the first fucking video that pops up is that idiot, and yes, I'm calling you an idiot, who's playing that fucking rap song and the sub's going in and out like this. You're not going to have a sub for a long time if you do that. So, uh, if you have any questions about settings, you know, you want to buy a system, run the system specs by me. You know, give me the information, I'll tell you if it's good or not. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm not even making money off this, so I don't care. But, anyway, F12, Big America sub, pick one up if you can. Guys, you wanted to see some movement. Here's the best movement I can get without getting the fucking police called on me. <laughs>